There you go. Okay, so we are more or less live. It's uh, Christoph Clugston and Ken O'Neill. I'm in Southeast Asia in the jungle where it's still warm, got fans going, and Ken is in Saint, more or less Saint, in, the, in the suburbs of St. Louis, Missouri, United States. And uh, anyway, so today, uh, let me say right off the bat, <laughs> sort of a pun for our topic, that uh, this is uh, my big website is fluentfighting.com. And then the, my secondary website is combat-judo.com, which is, this is the shirt, part of the shirt for the combat judo. Anyway, so we're going to talk about death by stick. Well, not just stick, but by tire iron, baseball bat, pool cue, lead pipe, two by four, and I don't know. We're not going to cover like a tree falling on you, but... <laughs> <laughs> but this is going to be exciting because most people don't talk about this. You're looking at all the other guys talking about self-defense, self-protection, or in the martial arts guys, just the basic karate guys or the Wing Chun guys or the JKD guys. They don't talk about this. And uh, Ken, why do you think they don't talk about it? Let's start there. You know, why don't other people talk about death by stick? I think because it their their fixed system just never had to address that for some reason so they don't they don't fool around with it and they don't we both know a lot of these guys don't test anything like our off off camera or offline conversation we just had a little while ago about even how guys approach knife work they don't they don't test stuff and see where it fails you have to keep doing that you know so i think since they, they just don't ever think about it they're they're, they're convinced and it's a good thing you tell people they're wrong and everybody's out there shooting each other, you know, and, you know, statistically it's, that's, that's in the smaller range of what's really happening out there. So I think that's why. Yeah. Well, let's delve into that because you had brought up some very good empirical sort of scientific ways to go about this. And that's how you and I both approach this is we don't care about, feelings or opinions we want to know the facts and we want to know what works and what doesn't work and neither one of us are proponents in a vested in interest we don't have a something we want to work we we just use what works and it doesn't matter to us what it is if it works if we're both outcome based we want to produce the result of success and that means staying alive survival number one and winning is then the, the next step on that so past survival we go to winning so the thing that you were talking about before and I kind of brought up too was that the what you need to do is is test this in a safer environment first uh, and then look at what works and what doesn't work because what we've seen is people showing defenses against sticks that are or clubs that are swung too slow with no conviction and the guy pauses and stops i mean the static the static attack that's probably indicative of all uh, most of the martial arts you, you see the guy goes slow and then the guy responding is going five times as fast that yeah. is not gonna, that is not going to happen in reality. Salat guys are famous for F, uh, uh, the uh, Filipino martial arts guys will do the same thing too. When they have someone demonstrate, the guy will go here and he'll go a million, do a million things. Uh, okay, something that these other people are not talking about is this is too much energy. You are not going to be. You can't fight like that unless you are training. Young, if you're young training, <laughs> and I mean really training. You, you got, you know, three minutes in you, maybe, if you've been doing it. But if you're older, not training and stuff, you got about 60 seconds. And then you're going to be in anaerobic uh, – you're going to be in oxygen debt from the anaerobic expenditure, and you're going to want to die from that, and then you'll be so vulnerable that you probably will die. And if you have multiple attackers, you can't keep up that, that velocity. It's just impossible. So uh, what you were saying, though – Let's go with that threshold thing. Like, explain. We we're talking about wiffle bats, for example. Let go with the threshold thing with the wiffle bats. You know, that's yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's the idea that um, you you have to just test things and see at what point they fail. You know, and um, 
you, I mean, a lot of guys have some very stylized things in mind as far as how they're going to approach something like a bat. And what I've seen more often than not is you have to not deal so much directly with the bat. You've got to get to the guy. <laughs> you've got to let not, they've got to keep that bat from making contact with you, you know. The way I work is I, I try to go to the hands and the arms, and you've got to move, you know. You And one of the first things I find that always got to fail, and this is the same with bats and, and knives and edge weapons too, there's a, you can't really spend a lot of time backing up. You know, and usually without telling people, I put them in a situation where they're going to be able to back up for about two seconds, and all of a sudden they're in a corner, two concrete walls meeting. It's like, uh oh, now where do I go? I back myself into the corner, you know. So basically, the, the the idea of taking the darn thing and not even telling a guy how to attack, but just telling him to work himself up and take this guy out with a bat and go at him. And let's see what happens, and then you discover the threshold. Well, like most guys are sitting there and they're trying to grab the bat and, you know, the, the things, the, the short end of the bat's hitting them in the hands. It's wrapping around and clubbing them in the arm and they, they're not moving other than in one direction, which is linear, you know? So, you, you know, you got to work with it and test it. And, and I, I, I'm trying not to give away too much here, but. Yeah, I understand, I understand that. You got to learn how to move. Yeah. You got to learn how to move. <laughs> and there's more yeah. direction just going backwards. And backwards, well, we'll, you'll find that, out. Yeah. Back, well, let me. Let, yeah, let me say some some points there that you that you that you hit on. And one is that yes, we cannot back up very quickly. We are meant to go forward. Uh, you cannot back up uh, faster than someone can move forward. You can't do it. And I used to always use the analogy: it's like you're on the railroad tracks trying to back up. The train's going to get you. The train is going to hit you if you're trying to back up. That you cannot back up because we don't have toes facing that direction we're meant to go forward or at angles we're meant to go primarily forward we're not meant to go backward so that of course is a flaw now what you were saying uh, they're using they're trying to use patterns stylized techniques that don't account for changes like they're this is the problem with Filipino stuff and Salat stuff now I'm gonna give you a one come in here a four you do this and that here's the answer for a four here's a nine. the numbering system changes with each system you know here this is a one at most this for the one I'm gonna do this for the for the for the whatever three or the two or whatever the hell this angle you're gonna do this it's different you know if the guy comes up this way you know it's a different answer those that's too complex and that's you didn't learn, you're not going to be able to box like, I'm using sports here, you're not going to be able to box, kickbox, judo, or or wrestling that way either. You, you don't learn, like, the guy does this, I do this. You learn something, you learn a concept first. You're trying to apply, and I'm giving away a lot. You you learn a, a principle that you want to apply, and that then you have to put yourself in the position to learn where that threshold is. And like I was saying, to add on to what you said about about failure is that nasa for example test every part of their space shuttle to see where the failure is like they're going to put it under so much pressure until it fails they don't put it under some pressure and say okay that was good no they keep going because they want to know where the fail where the fail is at so that when it had when they put it out in space they know it can take so much pressure. Same thing with a nuclear submarine or whatever. You're not going to go out in a nuclear submarine that hasn't been tested to failure. And the thing is, you need an instructor, trainer, who can push you sequentially through that safely to find your failure. Like, where does that, where does that technique fall apart at? Where does it not work? And the thing is, what we were talking about, wiffle bats, plastic bats, that uh, they don't have the weight, and they, of course, they're not going to hurt you like a, a real bat would. But you use those because you want to find out where your your techniques fall apart. Whatever you were taught, you, if you're if you're trying to be a scavenger, a freebie hunter, looking at YouTube, want to be experts who there aren't many experts out there in the in this thing. There's loads of people who want to be. You know, watch me, watch me. I know what I'm talking. No, you don't, because you have no operational experience. Like those of us who have been in this in that operational experience, going to tell you, they don't know what they're talking about because when someone is swinging a baseball bat at you, it is fast, it hurts, and it's I mean, it hurts. It can kill you. In fact, the United States FBI statistics: the number one murder weapon 
for a bludgeoning device is a baseball bat. So those United States is a baseball bat. And in Africa, the continent as a whole, death, murder by a blunt instrument, be that pipe, two by four, uh, club, that is the number one way. It, it is not a gun, it is not, it is not a knife. And the thing is, you're not gonna gun your way out of everything. The United States people want to say, I'll use a gun, you don't have a gun. You're not, right now, you don't have a gun. You're not in an elevator with a damn gun. You're, you're, not in the, you're not going everywhere with a gun. You're not gonna get it out. If someone runs up and cracks you with a baseball bat, you're, you can see it. You're not gonna get a gun out. So you need to know, you, need, you always have your body with you. You don't have a gun with you at all times. So you need to train your body and you need to get a print. And I think that's what we're, what we're both, and we're giving away a lot. We're both saying really, you need a principle based system, right, Ken? I mean, it's, it's more, con it really is. I think it's more conceptual than technique, really. You know, um, I think that comes first because you got to deal with the, you know, People start swinging a bat. I mean, it, people freeze. You know, just trying to get people past that barrier. You know, of that 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 free, we've talked about this before, but but of freezing up. You know, you gotta you gotta drill them to where they don't freeze. They're proactive. They're going in. You know, I tell them, man, a guy, whether it's a baseball bat or a knife, you know, if you you, you can't keep backing off too long. You know, uh, you got to go in at some point or he, he's coming in or you're going, somebody's going in, you know, so you, you better work with that and see what happens, you know? And, uh, I, I try not to overly prescribe. I mean, I, I try to experiment and then we discover what's failing and then we go, okay, well, how do we approach this? What's the way around that? Right. And then that way. And you know, it comes down to move, movement first, movement first and technique follows you know it's not the other way around and you know as well as i do a lot of the so-called traditional arts start with the technique and then all of a yeah. sudden as soon as you take it off that one line where you work it all the time it fails it's well, not a doubt i go know, well, you're standing up how about laying down how about sitting how about on your knees how about you know it, it comes out of the flow with you know and folks don't test it a lot well that that exactly you know you said something that uh, or alluded to it is something that I that I said and but I especially said in our in our in our combat judo camps and with all the guys that were interested in that is that there are people out there who are they are technique collectors they want to collect a bunch of techniques but they don't have application they don't yeah. have they don't have the principle and the technique is not the the technique is not the answer because we have Man, and I just, I just, I'm not going to get into this very deeply, but for those of you who are interested, you can come to a combat judo uh, camps and seminars. Look on that page, and they're listed when they're happening. But we have a very specific battle plan is incorrect. It's really a personal encounter. <laughs> it's, it's, it's personal warfare encounter because a battle is a, ser is a series of encounters. But at the, at the personal level. You have to win every one of them. You don't good. You don't live if you don't win every one of your warfare encounters. Whereas in a battle, you can lose some encounters and actually win the battle. But that is not the case for you as a as a person. You have to win every encounter you're in. So you have to have a plan. We have a plan. Most people do not have a plan, and they can't even answer. If you went into somebody's place and said, "Well, what is your what is your personal encounter plan?" Well, we're going to win. How do you do that? The how. How we have that, I'm not putting that out right here, but come to us at a seminar uh, or a camp. But what I'm saying is that that leads right into the principle. I mean, the whole point of that is you have a principle, you're applying principles, just like, and I'll, I'll say this one because it's so vague, we can both kind of use this one. We want to off balance somebody at some point, there's an off balance, uh, yeah. And that is a principle, and we're looking for that principle. Now, how are we gonna, are we stuck with one technique to do that off balancing? No. Are we gonna do that uh, step one? No. Are we gonna do it step two or three? We're not certain, we're not certain. But we are looking to apply off balancing the, the enemy, the attacker. That's a principle that applies to every one of our uh, encounters. You're, I mean, we're approaching it differently. Than from one from one another. I mean, your way is different than my way, 
but we're both still using that principle and I, that's what it means because we're, we still that's what you have to look at and your training and my training we're both putting it in that uh, lab retory <laughs> if you want to call it that of, of, of seeing what's going to work and what's not going to work but we're but we're still applying that principle because we know that that principle is sound uh, I mean is, does that cover it pretty well do you think you know yeah I, I like to borrow a phrase I think Kevin Secure came up with this he calls it pressure testing things that's a well, good yeah. one yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we call it we call it in in combat judo we call it hostile immersion. You know, you're 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 immersed in, in hostility because that's another factor I think we should really talk about too because that's something that's missing uh, with people training. You know, they're they're when they're doing these uh, techniques, they're doing these techniques in a friendly environment <laughs> that's well lit and. Uh, that doesn't have a lot of stress on them, you know, you because the, you're not ready. If you're training in your T-shirt and your shorts in a gym with good lighting, good good heating, good air conditioning, good footing, you are not ready to be out in the snow, for example, wearing a parka with mittens. That is not trained you for that. You know, you're not ready for that. You don't know the differences. You don't know about the weight. You don't know how that's going to affect your movement. You don't know how the other person is going to react. Your techniques are not are based on gym training that is not applicable to environment. That's why I'm kind of doing a big kind of thing about combat judo. We do environmental phase training. All of our stuff is trained in the environment. We do not train in an artificial environment. We train in the snow. We train in the heat. We train outside. We train in the water. We train all it all all the time. I mean, that's where you learn. You learn in that environment. How are you going to perform in an environment that you never trained in? And I think that's the biggest, I mean, that and 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 clinging to a technique that you don't know. You say, when did you go to somebody and then you see this technique? It's like, when did you use it? Well, I learned the stuff so I don't have to. That is such a non-answer. That's like going to someone and saying, I, I learned how to run so I never have to run. <laughs> then get out of the business because you're you're not helping anyone. You're a disservice. You're a fraud. You're just, you know, I consider you bringing us down. I mean, you and I have paid our dues, <laughs> and we've gone through it. And the reason we can talk from a expert level is because of that. We're not talking from expert level because of theory. And, and really, Ken, like, talk about that because you are not – you're not doing anything about theory, right? I mean, everything you're doing is 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 application for well, procedure. Yeah, mostly and, and doing stuff so that guys learn how to feel what to do, you know, instead of following a prescription. One of my favorite things in what you said is, is um, you know, that classic, I, I, in generic terms, I call it the, the outward wrist lock, you know, or yeah. what they call Cody Gosh and, you know, and, you know, yeah. I'll see guys train that and train that and train that and train that and train that. And, man, when they're standing there and a guy grabs, they can do it perfect. All of a sudden, as soon as the angle changes just a little bit or they try it from a different position, it fails. And I'm like, so what was the point of wasting all that all that time on it? In fact, one of the big things we just did in our workshop is I showed people how to uh, – just how, how uh, angular changes in locking their own joints like that – takes away 90% of your ability to get any of those locks on in the first place, you know, yeah. and, you know, and that stuff. So why do you want to keep tra training something that you've proven over and over again fails most of the time? Why would you keep doing that over and over again? Well, because it's part of the system and it's part of the, and this is why most of the guys I have in my classes have come from other arts where they've been in them for years and either they had a failure in real application or they discovered on their own fooling around that oh you know this isn't so good you know and and I like what you said about the environment too I don't I mean I've got a thin layer of this really cheap foam shit that those interlocking jigsaw puzzle things yeah 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 I know. Out, you know, we're on concrete with just a very so you learn to fall and you learn to roll much differently on that then you know I, guys were uh, a guy was talking about one of my guys was talking about his uh his son-in-law, who's a big BJJ guy on the East Coast, and they have the spring-loaded gymnastics floor. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. bad, man. That's really bad. Those guys are going to be sloppy as hell when they fall. Yeah. They're not going to get hurt like they – you know, and training 
we go to a place in Forest Park where there's tree roots and shit all over the place, and you know you got to yep. train it all that stuff, you know. And like you said, your footing's different. Even just grass, you yep. know, just grass as opposed yep. to you know, it's all different, yep. and yeah, yep. that's important, you know. Um, yeah, well, that that yeah, I mean, you know, really, we could we could we could we could do a whole episode just on environmental. Maybe yeah. we should. So maybe we should. So let's not go way deep in it, but yeah, let's just, yeah, yeah. but, but let's just, but let's just say again, for the benefit of the listeners or people watching it later is that you cannot perform in an environment that you've never been in. That's like saying, Hey, I, you know, I'm doing pretty well walking around here. Are, are you ready for Mars? <laughs> you know, I mean, are, or Jupiter? You know, with the gravity is much heavier. I mean, are you are you ready? Do you think that you're going to take what you've learned here on Earth and it's going to apply in Jupiter if you've never trained for Jupiter? I don't think so. And yeah. oh, this is not the yeah. It is exactly the same. If you have not trained in the snow, for I'm using that one. If you've not trained in the snow, if you haven't been up to your knees in snow, there goes your kicks. You know, there go your kicks. There goes your fast movement. That goes yeah. quick, like you're talking about, like you know, and then and then the thing that we were talking about offline, like how these guys try to get away from knife attacks or how they try to want to get away from from club attacks, it's not going to work, you know. And one of the one of the precepts or one of the rules, really, in military warfare and per, even the personal level is you have to close with and destroy the enemy. You have got wow. to close wow. with. Wow. That's you crucial. Have, yeah, wow. you're going to close with. You know, and I'll say this one. This was this is kind of kind of well known in the military circles, but normal people probably wouldn't have heard this very much. But no army is ever won by retreating. <laughs> you know, you don't win by retreating. You're going to have to engage at a, at, a, at some point. And when it comes to this, and we're talking worst case scenarios. We're not talking about heated discussions that could that could be a fight that couldn't be a fight. No, we're talking about violence. Where there is no de-escalation of it, there's only dealing with it. Because a lot of people want to act like you can always get, talk your way out of stuff. No, you can't. You can't. You know, I can take you many places in the world, and you're going to be—they're going to attack you. And you, asking why and trying to reason with them is not going to do anything but get you killed. So you've got to have solutions, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about worst case, worst case, worst case. And I don't like to use that term because no one listens to worst case scenario. I mean, they've heard it's trite now. You know, they don't. It doesn't make any impression and there's no impact left on them. But we're in these horrible situations, and that's what we're talking about. You and I are talking about this. You can't avoid it, you can't get away from it. It's a mob coming at you, or it's someone who wants your car or your money, or your who knows, your cell phone, your smartphone. They want something, you know, and they're not gonna stop until they take it from you and maybe leave you dead. So in those instances, you have got to be ready ahead of time. You can't do catch up. Like you can't survive it. It's not like sport fighting where, oh, okay, I lost, you know, and then I can go home and work on it. There is no working on this stuff. This stuff is you do it beforehand, or that's the end of you, you know. And it's and it's not like like you were saying. It's not technique based. It's not technique based. It's about it's about changing the person, wouldn't you say? That's what you're doing, Ken. I mean, basically, you're changing those guys. You're you're training, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. You're playing off of things that they that they fail at and they do wrong, and you're you're giving them alternatives and then having them experiment with it. You know, a, a key thing we're coming up here with. I think it's really good to get this across is, and you've said it about five different ways. Is you you have to proactively basically counterattack at the it, it even the sense of the beginning of the attack i was i had a guy try to jump me in forest park some years ago there's this walk this wooden trail that they basically put through the woods for uh handicapped people you know to be able to go wheelchairs it's all you know nice platforms and stuff and i had a guy approach me and he just stopped and started looking at me and he didn't even say anything but he started coming toward me and i knew right away where this was was headed and I know what threw him off most is I didn't back up. I went forward. I went forward at a slight angle, and I, I then he then he then he then he struck at me, and I actually took him old fireman's carry type throw right over the top of the railing of the thing, and he landed on a piece of a down tree. It was kind of bad, but I mean it was not, his intentions were obvious, but I wasn't trying. There was no time to talk. I mean the guy looked at me. 
he looked around. He, he realized there was nobody around, and he started coming. He did not expect me to come in. You know, he thought I'd be intimidated and was going to back up. And he knew he had me because there's rails on this thing, and it's up above the ground. So where am I going to go but back? And then, you know, you have the time distance problem. He's running, and I'm moving back. You know, he's going he's gonna to overcome me at some point, you know. So I think it's just good to always remind people that you, you got to train to go to to go in. You know, you have a have to have an attack mentality, even if it's counterattack mentality. Right. Right. And I, I think that's a, that's a, what you did. What, okay, so what we're, what we're getting to and, and something that I, I think I alluded to before in some of our talks, uh, because I sometimes I get mixed up on what I said here and what I've said to some other people and things, but is strategy and tactics. The, you know, we're talking about strategy and tactics as opposed to techniques, and that and this is a, this is a very different. If you don't have a strategy and, and tactics, uh, and I know that the terms have started changing in the military because I'm dealing with that now, and I, they're starting to call certain things. Uh, tech, they're certain they're start, start starting to call certain things procedures that I used to call tactics. So I mean, there's a little bit of difference now in the words, but whatever. And the overall sense, if you don't have these strategy and tactics of what what you're going to do, you're not going to survive. And that's part of the plan I was talking about. You and I are both talking about arming people ahead of time with a plan. And that plan is adaptable to a certain situation. Because even you were in the you were in the park. I know that park. I used to spend time in that park. And there in the park, or if you're out in the alley, or if you're in out even in the snow, again I kind of stuck on the snow thing. And your overall plan is to go in. That doesn't change. That's what I'm saying. It is adaptable to whichever environment you're in. It will change. You will, you might be faster in certain environments. You're like even on the beach. You're going in. You're going in on the guy. And I mean, he's coming at you. You're going at him. I mean, why? Because he's he's in his mind. He's thinking he's going to hit you at a certain place. Now you change that by coming forward, and that's what throws a lot of people's. Uh, Mike Salen used to talk about that all the time. They're like they're punching where they think you are, but you're not yeah. there. Right. That's right. You know, and, and and the same thing goes with with what you're saying. Man, I I, too, I wish you'd had. Do you think the guy was trying to rob you, or is he just wanted to beat you up? What do you think was going on? Uh, I think that was a robbery. That's the feeling I had. But that's yeah. what he was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, see, now people. The physical thing I've had to do it anybody on the street in years. That was a long time ago. Yeah, Seven well, years, maybe. Yeah. Well, the see, the thing is, you know what? People would say, "Oh, use a gun." You can't just shoot somebody for looking at you. No. You know, you know, the you gun know? thing. Oh, yeah, God. you know what I mean. Yeah, cops can. Cops can get away with it, you know, because that's they got you know whatever level in the United States to let them do whatever they want. But as a normal person, you're you're not gonna, or even military, they don't let military get away with it. You're you can't just shoot somebody for looking at you, and you would say, I know, and they say, Well, you don't know, and you say, Yeah, I do, because I know, because that's what I do with my life. I know you don't know. I know. Up and he's getting ready, you know. It's yeah. like here. Well, you know, yeah, you know, but yeah, try to defend that if you pull the gun and shot the guy. Try yeah. to defend that with no witnesses, yeah. you know. Well, it, yeah. it, your audio freeze with your video? Well, I guess you're fixing it on your end. Oh. Okay. Are we Audio, yeah, you yeah oh. I froze. I froze. You know, I yeah. just want to, I, I should have told you before. Sometimes on my end, it freezes, but you're still good on your, you know, it's still recording. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, that's I, fine. I just, I just want to, I just want to say that sometimes because we think both of our ends sometimes mess up. But it's it's not that way because I've looked at it. If that happens, I can keep talking for a while. Yeah, it's, it's trying to give you. Anyway, what I was trying to ask was 
I don't know if you answered it or not. Uh, what did you do? And I mean, what was your follow up in that? Did you stick around or did you leave? Uh, well, yeah, no, I did. I stuck around. I wanted to see if uh, you know what I think that uh, it knocked the wind out of the guy bad. He was gulping, gulping yeah. air. Yeah. And then I saw him get up and he sat up and he shook his head off. Cause, you know, luckily he, he clipped the tree, but it was angular and he landed flat on really uh, like, um, you know, forest type. There was yeah. a lot of old leaf. You know, I think it cushioned him a little bit. So it just knocked the wind out of him, surprised the hell out of him. And when I saw him sit up and shake it up and he started getting all up, that's when I, I took off. Oh, and I, okay. I, I just yeah. made a call. And I told the cops that, you know, there was there was a guy that tried to jump me and I said, he's up and moving around, they, you know, and then I just hung up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering. I was just wondering. But yeah, I wanted to make so, sure if I had to call an ambulance or something, which I was hoping yeah. I did. I have it. But if but, he's not hurt, there's nothing, you know. Yeah. Well, but my, the overall point I want to emphasize for everybody is that, that you had that plan again, though, right? I mean, that's that's what we're trying to get to. You had that plan that. Okay, it's on. There's no debating about why. There's just there's just responding at that yeah. point. And so that was. Uh, but really, you know, okay, here's where here's where I see the JKD training you and I did that it, it that it comes up in everything that we're doing. And that and that is the basic underlying principle of intercepting. That's what we really did. You know, that's what you did. You you intercepted the guy. Yeah, it, he was you know, in motion. I mean, he was in motion. Yeah, he was starting yeah. to come. Well, I mean, intercepting, intercepting exists at many levels, even at the conceptual level, because you know, like you're saying, you are you were already intercepting him when you got the the vibe. You were already there on the vibe. Which, and I can tell you, I didn't go into this thing thinking, "Gee, this guy's gonna throw a punch at me in this confined area, and I'm gonna do this old fireman's yeah. carry type thing." Yeah. It, that's just how the positions and the angles worked out. There was no thought at all. Yeah. Yeah. At all, it just happened. That's the way it went down because. Yeah. His angle, the way he was moving, uh, you know, it's just the way it fell in place. Well, you know? my, my, but the point to take away from this was the reason you were able to adapt yourself and be fluid. Let's use all the JKD terminology. You were like water. <laughs> it's because of the training you had done and that your training had emphasized this respond like an echo. Man, I'm using all the JKD stuff. You know, you were you. That's exactly what you did. You responded like an echo, didn't you? I mean. You got his vibe, and then you were, and the thing is, like a lot of people watching this, they're not going to know what we mean. But when you've been doing this a long time, and you've done certain specific training, you you pick a vibe up, you pick a vibe yeah. up, and you pick it up early, and and before other people, other people are clueless. I've been in situations where other people around me were clueless, and I had to tell them, hey, look over there at these guys. You know what I mean? You know, because I'm telling oh. you, you know. <laughs> terrible and especially the smartphones and stuff are making it worse everybody walks around like this yeah not yeah this way not even looking i see people bump into stuff they're just staring at this thing all day and i'm like oh man you guys yeah. are idiots you know well but yeah i mean there's that that's a that divided attention thing but then there's uh, also then there's also the people who are just clueless you know they don't yeah they yeah. don't they don't pick i mean you know what i'm talking about they don't pick up on the intentions of other people you know? I watch people on walks in the park, and folks are walking up behind them, <laughs> and they're assuming it's okay because they're on a yep. little walking path. Yeah, yeah. It's like I always make sure that yeah. they know that I see them. I always just give them a look, and they know I see them. You know, and then yeah. I watch them yeah. coming behind me. I keep an eye on them. I'm, yeah. I'm sure you do the same thing. Yeah. Public ba public bathrooms too. You know what I'm saying? I, oh. There's there's yeah. certain things that I do that other people and other people are like, what do you do? It's like yeah. Why do I do that? Because I'm not going to become uh, ambushed. I'm not going to get ambushed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and 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 I I can't. I don't know how many times that people have realized that I picked up on stuff and they don't try to ambush me. You know, I I I can say you know at least twenty times that I can think of that that somebody was contemplating ambushing me. You know, but because I was vigilant and I do certain things differently than normal people that they didn't try it. Uh, oh. if I would, yeah, you know, you know, yeah. you know, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, I uh, people veer off a lot of times just by showing them that I'm, you know, not backing yeah. away and I'm showing yeah. them that I see them. You, you yeah. watch them they change course quickly. You know, they were up yeah. to something. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, everybody wants to do something you don't see. Yeah. And so when, once they're aware that you're on them, Visually, they 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 switch up, and 
this is the thing, I guess, um, I think another part of the, let's talk about the training, the faults. See, the thing is, why do we, why do I concentrate on faults? Because it, when you're at a higher level, you don't get better by ignoring faults of techniques or faults of other training. You get better by curing the fault. You get better by curing the faults of other training techniques and training methods. And one of the things that you kind of said, you talked about it a little bit, but let's specifically talk about it. And that's that these guys, when they're doing their club defense or their, or their stick defense, they're saying, the guy is going to hit me with a number one. They hey. clearly know, they clearly know what's going to happen. And what, and what you and I both say and have said is that you got to make it, you don't know what if, where they're going to hit you. Because if you can't respond like an echo, you can't respond like an echo to a one, a five, a nine, or a seven, then what you have is no good. Then you've, then you've trained yourself in a pattern that only works with choreography. And it's, yeah. good, for, it's good for a movie, but it, it doesn't... Uh, and I and I mean I, I mean we've talked a little bit about it before, but it's important that if your training does not, if you don't have an instructor who knows how to do this, and by listening to us and trying to imitate it, you're not qualified. It doesn't mean you're qualified. just by listening to what we're talking about and you try to replicate it. Does that doesn't? It's not going to work. You got to have someone who really knows what they're doing. So when you were talking about that girl, when you were saying you trained that girl and you brought her to that. Uh, to SIU, yeah, and then, yeah, and then you you had people just jump her. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and this is what the training has to be like. And the same thing, like we're, let's talk about, let's go back, and we're giving out free training, basically. Uh, if you got the wiffle bat, you just you don't tell the 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 person who has to be the defender. You don't tell them who has a wiffle bat and when it's going to happen. You know. And this guy can try to hit you with any type of strike. You're going to find out that there's certain strikes that are very high probability they're going to happen and some that you're not going to ever see, you know. That's kind of a fault. Because like you were talking about, and you and I both agree with this, you should spend your time on things that are, that are going to happen, not on things that are not going to happen. And that's why, for example, I stopped trapping. Let's talk about the JKD Wing Chun yeah, stuff. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. 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 Because I'd rather, because I was like, this is not going to happen. It's a waste of time. It's intricate. It, it took, that was the longest period. That took me longer than anything when I was training with Mike to learn was trapping. It was, it was, you know, I got it, but it took me longer than, than. I even challenged uh, Dan Asano on that in one of our private workouts, our little group private workouts at Jay's years ago in the eighties. I'm like, why do we spend all this time on this? Because in the time that you can do that, you yeah. can just be hitting the guy or you can, you can be going for a takedown. Yeah. Why would yeah. Thank you? Trap you can blow right through it, you know. Yep. Why bother? Yeah, because I, 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 I don't remember what he said. I don't remember him giving me much of an answer. I yeah. think the answer is somewhere in the well. Well, I'm showing this art, and that's part. You know, it's something like that. Yeah, historically, right? It's just you know. Yeah. 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 Well, I agree with you, and actually, we're a, a tangent, but you know, this helps everybody who pays yeah, attention. Yeah. Is sure. is that? I yeah, I found that I went to Greco. I do. I went to Greco Roman. I'm like, you know. Instead, instead of uh, doing trapping, I'm just going to blow, blow, blow right past that crap to oh, yeah. Greco, to Greco Roman throws. And I, you know, I spent uh, like a year working on Greco Roman. It's like in in one week you can do more with Greco than you can do in three months of, with trapping. You know, and I'm like, yeah. why in the hell? Like you're saying too. And the same thing with these guys who do the. You know, I just talk about the Filipino stuff where they where they block something and then they want to pass it. It's like you could have already punched the guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what in the hell is that about? You know, it's it, it, it's just the long route, and they they think it looks cool. You know what I mean? Like you stop it, and then you're gonna pass it. You know, I can hit you. You know, why why would I not hit? You know, why would I hit you? Why would I not hit you? Because that's what we do in professional fighting. I'm not gonna do all this to pass it and then do something, I'm going to hit you, you know? Why would I just not angle away from your thing and hit you, you know? I mean... One of the things that made me drop all that stuff, too, was, was you know, when in that range, which you would call trapping range, or I call it a bent elbow range, where you're about <laughs> yeah. half an arm, yeah. like, you know, when, when, when guys go for your hands, you know, that, that would be getting into kind of a trapping thing, right? To, to yeah. clear and trap. 
I, I figured out a long time ago, if you just keep forward pressure and with sensitivity, you just come right over the top of that with elbow shots. Yeah. It's on. That elbow shot's in, and you're into grappling. Yeah, well, I mean, Mike would Mike would def would already, you know, come up and, you know, he'd stop. I mean, you can stop someone trying to do that elbow if you know what you're doing with that. But you're in you're, – but what, what all of a sudden – what if instead of the guy's trying to grab you, you return and grab – you know what I mean? If you just grab the guy, then the Wing Chun guys don't know what the hell to do, you know? They don't know what to do. They're going to give you these in effect – you know, they're going to try to do their – Battle punch, it's not going to work, you know, and they have not developed one inch punching, you know, it's a, you know, that was Bruce's solution. Remember, he was trying to do one, you know, his thing was, I'm going to be able to punch here, which is, which would be if you're grappling, but it's just not going to work, you know, and, and his was a big setup. I, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. His wasn't from you're actually fighting and struggling. See there. Okay. Basically. All right. I'm, this is a big secret. This is because they're not employing it in their, in their training. What we're doing is we have a struggling part when we're tra in our training. Your training, my training, and in John Saylor too. We're we're doing struggling. You're struggling, and if because if you if you think you're going to apply technique, and there's not going to be any struggle, you you don't think that there's a primal component in every encounter, and especially if it's light immortal combat. If it's warfare, personal warfare, there is a primal component, and you have got to know about that primal component, and you have to be able to go there because that's where the technique just goes away. <laughs> I mean, well, why isn't my technique work? Because this is primal, <laughs> and uh, you're going to get your, your 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 nose ripped off. You know, I mean, are, have you been practicing that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, because that's going to stop all of your techniques right there. I just gave away some free training, but <laughs> uh, do you find, I mean, you, are you putting a lot of prime, are you, are you putting these guys up into the primal uh, stage? Yeah, we do you know? it time, because when I do it too right. much, people are like, I'm already stressed yeah. out. I don't want to go to that level every day. You know, that's yeah, why I say every day. No, 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 no. Like, yeah. I usually do that in What's workshop. That? By the way, that elbow thing I was telling you about, I've tested that about a thousand times and it wouldn't work on mic. Yeah. But it works out about the other 99% of the Yeah, people. I know, I know, I know, you know I know. I'm I know, just I know. Keep forward pressure. I know, I know, I know. It's yeah. right over the top. And they get, it's a tie elbow is all it is. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, know, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking I know what you're talking about. There's also, yeah, you can also, you can also fold it. You can you can do the up one, too. Oh, yeah. We work, we work at all angles to be able to go every which way. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, based what you said earlier, you know, when I do those kinds of things, I like to do shit, like create weird environments, like set up a situation, in, and I may have mentioned this once before, where you're, you're one of the things happening here is on this new Metrolink, the, like the St. Louis subway thing now that they have. They yeah. didn't have back when you were here. And you, uh, yeah. A lot of shit happens on there and has been for a while, and I'm like, well, let's do that. Yeah. Let's. You're in this window seat. You're up against there, and there's, you know, yeah, the guy scoots in and, and uh, that one's really fun when I have the cops in there because they they've seen that scenario. They you know, and then they make great attackers for that stuff because they read the reports and and uh, but all that stuff you know, throwing shit at people that there's no way they're going to have a technique for that. You know, they yeah. the guy's jamming up against you and he's reaching for your he's distracting you by what he's saying to you to try to intimidate you and he's going for your cell phone to steal it and yeah. you're jammed up and, you know and you or have his to, friend is, or his friend is. You know, because sometimes yeah. it works. Friends behind you. We do that one too. Yeah. 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 You know, he starts grabbing your head or starts choking you from behind, and you're, yeah. you know, that. But all that yeah. shit is what you have to do. Then people learn how to adapt. You well, know, that's, yeah. You know, I mean, it goes back to what I say. And I said, and, and, and the one of the, and I, coming, there's a lot of takeaways from, if you want to use that word, from what we're, what we're covering today. And, Principle. It's the principle based. You're giving these guys principles of, to use, and then you're saying, "Okay, I'm going to put you in an environment where you're going to have to test those principles out." Now, how you apply those principles is your own way. It's just like if we if we biomechanically look at how people walk or run, it's the same. We have to shift weight, and you know, we're basically follow, following going forward. But your gait and my gait and exact foot strikes are going to be different. And that's the same thing. But the principles, I mean, we're, you're not running differently than I am at the biomechanical 
area of shifting weight. You and I are both shifting weight. We're both kind of falling forward when we're running, but we run differently. So the underlying principle is the same though. And that's what you're doing. You're putting these guys in the situation where you're saying, look, here's the principle. You've been trained in the principle. Now you get to, you got to make the principle. Oh man, I don't want to go into jazz because that's right. There it is though. Jazz music, right? You know, you know, you, you know, <laughs> you know, the scale, you know, the mode. And so you can, you can do what you want with that mode. Right. So, uh, uh, yeah, you can do. Yeah, oh, man. I just I don't want to get into the, I don't want to get into the, the jazz though. It's just but it, it went right there. It went right there with the music. So, <laughs> when, uh, uh, the uh, let, let's, uh, let's 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 uh, let's talk about. So, what what was your what did you do with your last workshop? You did a workshop when last when did you do it? I just did one yesterday. Oh yeah, what what what, what was the topic? Um, a lot of what we were working on there was, um, how do I put this in a pigeonhole? Um, it was, it was a lot of, it was very much based on extricating yourself from hold and takedown attempts. Yeah. So like through movement. Sort of, yeah. Anti-grappling in a way. So anti yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of nullifying of, of particularly of guys trying to put you in a fixed lock position. You know? Yeah, and and then uh, then we were working on a high velocity, full speed guys. I mean, guys walking in, throwing stuff at you as hard and as fast as they could, and using movement to off balance. You know, yeah, rather than flashing. Yeah, rather than flashing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, semi circular movement and then and then going up here and using the wall yeah, yeah. The place to drive them into uh, you know stuff like that that's kind of a general way to put it yeah that stuff's fun that sort of thing's fun it's <laughs> it's fun to do the um, but you know I use a lot of that psychologically to get people over it's it's still just another trick to get them off of this backing up thing yeah. you know I got a lot of these guys pretty good now at when stuff's coming right at them barreling hard they're they're, they're moving in. And more to the side, you know, yep. and yep. you know that's what works the best when a guy's for real coming oh, hard yeah. and fast. And that's when it really works. Well, there, know, yeah, so. they're, 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 that's that's a, that's another thing with people's training. That's a fault in their training. They don't have the they don't have the kill uh, intention when they're practicing, and you need that. You need the person. You need see even like even that. You know, going back with the stick. You know, rearing back is is far. You get a. You get a different vibe as a person trying to defend than someone going back like this and doing this. But if I'm sure, and then you know, if I'm, you yeah. know, if, that's a whole nother intention level. And it's free training. You guys are learning free stuff from me. Uh, well, I've been thinking about this for 20 minutes as we're talking about this baseball bat thing, right? And yeah. that is okay. But when I pick it up and I feed it, I don't sit there and just. I mean, I come in and I start jab, 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 jab. I start going nuts with it, and they it freaks them out. And I want to freak them out. And then, yeah. then I, I'm looking for the right time to then blast them. Yeah. And that yeah. right there, just being erratic like that, and it's yeah. not just a nice, pretty swing, it changes the whole game. Yeah, because it's, you know, it's uh, welcome to the Twilight Zone, right? You, whatever yeah. you thought your life was is no longer there. Because, I mean, that was the basic premise of all Twilight Zones, right? You wake up and then yeah. it's, you can't predict, you can't. See, that's what we're saying. We train people for unpredictable encounters. And then these other guys are training people for predictable encounters. And they're saying, well, you'll be able to handle the unpredictable. No, you won't. No, you won't. And, and if they say they want to keep arguing with me, I'll say, show me the operational experience. Show me how many of your guys have, have actually had been attacked 10 times and they've been successful using what you're teaching them. Or how many times have you been? And then they're going to stammer and they're going to stutter and they're going to try to do a, a red herring and take a tangent, you know, because they can. But I don't care about that. I'm all about, you know, what's working, what's not working. And uh, that bat, like you're talking about, is, I mean, that's that right there. That's, and when you can do stop or you can deal with that, you know, no one has to give you a false sense of security. Of saying, hey, man, you did really well today, you know, blah, blah, blah. Do you feel empowered? You know, all the crap that these other guys are trying to blow people with. No, you, don't, don't you, don't, you, don't, you don't need it because you have done it. You know, same thing, I, you know, for 20-something years, 
I tell people, you know, at these self-defense things I've done, look, look, I'm going to try to knock you out. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to knock you out like a normal person tries to knock you out. And if you don't do what you, I've taught you to do up to this point, then it goes through sequences, you're going to get knocked out. And I, these people are successful, you know, and uh, it's because it's, but they know when they go away, they know they can, they don't, they don't go away questioning, well, will that work? They know it works, you know. And when you have a line of people and they get scared, you know, I mean, they get scared because they're like, well, he's not messing around. You know, I'm running at them, throwing a punch, you know, like you're going to see yeah. uh, in reality. It's like if you do what you're we're trying to do, what we've covered now for an hour and a half, you're not going to have any problem with this. And you're going to say, wow, that's easy. You know, but and you brought something. Yeah. Rather than stroking them, I don't do that. What we do is at the end of every class or workshop with. We all sit there in a circle, and I just say, "What'd you What'd you learn today?" Because I, I like that. Because then they get to decide, and they get to figure out, and they can reflect immediately since they just finished it. I want to make sure they think about it for a second. Like, well, what did you get out of this today? And that gets pretty interesting too, because then there's another little learning experience right at the end of the session. Because they start learning stuff. Oh, I didn't think about that. I, I didn't realize that because the other guy said it. You know. Yeah. That's always a really good thing to do. I don't try to stroke them, or I just yeah, say. Yeah. What What'd you get out of it? I created well, the experience. What'd you get? Well, uh, so let's uh, let's put this into a little bit of a business thing that we need to do sometimes, uh, because you know we can't just be giving out information all the time and being free sources of, uh, of training. So if people are interested in getting you for a workshop of various <laughs> workshops, how to how they should contact you on your Facebook or how should they get hold of you? Yeah, they, the Facebook's good. Just that's one of the easy ways to do it. I'll, I'll do the cheesy thing that I did last time. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah put that up. Yeah, put that. Put that up. I'll just, this is a cell phone and it's going to say, you're going to hear some real estate stuff on the beginning of it, but don't worry about it. It's the right number. Okay. And there it is. Wait. Okay. Put it up. Wait, wait, say it, say it. So it switches to three, one, three, one, four, five, zero, four. One one seven eight. Three one four five zero four eleven seventy eight. Yeah, eleven seventy eight. Yeah. Okay. I just want to so people can I, win. Yeah. And I've done this a lot where I'll just people will call me and I'll say, Well, here's what I'm here's what I need per hour and get yeah. as many guys as you can and the price gets cheaper. That's a simple yeah. way that I say it to people and I work it that way a lot. Well he's okay, so we'll just you know, we'll say, you know, uh, so Ken is uh, by the hour. You pay him by the hour. You don't pay him by the actual workshop uh, title or anything. You pay him Sometimes by the hour. If I'm setting it up, then you're paying a fee for the workshop. Yeah. But yeah. if you're calling me and you're wanting to set it up, I figure yeah. Yeah. you're going to be thinking about time, and I work it from there. And I say the more yeah, yeah. Right, right. I'll give you a fixed hourly rate. You decide how many hours you want. I would say don't go over four or five hours a day. And tell me how many guys, and uh, you know, I'll let you split it up. But all I care about, I get the one payment. It's up to you guys to collect it. That's yeah. how I do it for, for setup stuff for people that I don't that aren't in my regular workshops. You know, yeah, when they right, want to right. set up. That's right. Well, do. we're trying to we're trying to. I think we're trying to get you uh, and myself too to a wider audience. You know, the people that don't know us that haven't uh, dealt with us in the past. Because uh, I mean, they are they already found us. Uh, they found us from whatever means in the past. So we're trying to reach new people to help benefit them, you know, to serve them in their, in their endeavors to, for self-protection, self-discipline, uh, which the self-discipline comes in the fact that you are doing something about your life. <laughs> I mean, the, the, everyone talks about self-discipline in the martial arts, like the Karate Kid, but this is a bigger one, really, an overlying one, overarching one, in that you have the discipline to care about your life and not just think, well, I'll be okay. That's just another thing. It won't happen to me. And uh, a lot of people died thinking that, that went around thinking that. And and uh, I don't want to have to think about that. Well, it doesn't matter what you want to think about. It's what you're going to do because it's too late. You know, like we're saying, the gun the gun thing is, a, is an excuse in the United States, and it won't happen. You're not going to be able to pull a gun out everywhere. You're not going to be able to shoot everyone. You're not going to have a gun. The whole world is not the United States, and that's another aspect. And the, uh, but your body, wherever you go in the world, you're taking your body with you. <laughs> so you need these 
And these will, this will also translate to your gun skills too. I need to say that because I work with people doing this. You know, this is part of the thing that, that what we're talking about is a, is a mindset, a paradigm, and it applies also with, with firearms. And that's the exact things we're talking about will let you paint targets or who is an aggressor target and whatever terminology you want to use. And it's applicable, but, but I, I think that, uh, we should talk about here as we're getting closer to the end that we should talk about um, what do you see as the biggest flaw that people are doing in their training about sticks or clubs or pull cues or scream of sticks, <laughs> Arnie sticks. What would, what would you say that there, I mean, if we had to, you know, it's hard, but what would you say that the biggest flaw is in their training? Probably not doing any of it. And if they're doing, <laughs> yeah, I mean, most guys are doing all the sticks and all. And if and if they are, they're they're doing it in the fixed patterns. Right. You know, I, you know, it's so funny because I have done this with guys, and sometimes they don't know what I'm doing. But I'll I'll I like those Pekini sticks because they're a little scarier because they're you know they're 30 inches long and they're an inch in diameter. They're getting closer to being a club. They're bigger sticks, right? And uh, I'll get these guys that do Filipino stuff, and, and I'll just come in a little bit of rat. I mean, literally, just back and forth, really hard. And whoa, whoa, it's not at the prescribed angle. And I see these guys do the same old, like, you start them from it and back right into the corner, just like a guy with no training. Now, you know, you brought something up earlier, and it's on the same subject. What is it? It's a DVD that a guy put out a few years ago that was one of the better ones I've ever seen on Filipino martial arts, the bladed weapon or the edge. Oh, uh, you mean uh, no, the bladed hand? That's a that was good. It was well done, and I like that the guy was very not focused on one guy. He was going around the islands, and he was showing different stuff. But one of the most interesting things that I took away from that is, man, you see these guys in these patterns, and they're like, wow, they are so clean and crisp and precise. Then all of a sudden, they'll go out, and they'll do these fights, and they put their gear on and stuff, and it looks like a brawl. It starts getting all sloppy, and they're crashing into each other. Now, part of that's the equipment's not helping them because it's a little bulky, but but overall, it just it goes erratic, and all of a sudden, the guy's not, you know, these same these same guys. I just saw them do this really phenomenal looking stuff in the patterns, and all of a sudden, when there's no rules and they're just bashing each other, it tends to get very, very, very like you said, kind of primal, and it gets wild. And I'm like, so what I see in there that was good for their training is they have some attributes, they have some speed, and they can move, but I still see a lot of crazy, chaotic-looking stuff that starts to get very basic when they start really wailing on each other, and it's very interesting to see that. Yeah, you know, well, that was what spawned the Dog Brothers, actually. You know, I mean, and they're, yeah. they're, not, the, they're not the only ones, but, I mean, that was what spawned the Dog Brothers. And there's some things I got – uh, some contentions with the dog brothers too because whenever you add any sort of uh, armor you change the event but the uh, but what you're saying is uh, and, and I trained in the Philippines with a group and they hated that stuff because they're like these guys have no defense you say like, take because they sparred with no no equipment but we limited yeah. like we didn't whack each other in the head we whacked each yeah, other in right. the body we, we, we whack each other in the body but we didn't whack each other in the head and the thing is like uh, the guy, you know, said the the main guy said, you know, I flatly refused to be part of that. They asked me to be part of it. And I said, no, you guys have no defense. And those suits are all they're doing is like one person hits you 20 times. The other person hits you 30, a guy with yeah. 30, win, 30 wins. And it's like, you could be dead. You could have been already dead. Right. And, That's what I always learned about that a long time ago. Yeah. Your body's not, not acting the same way as when you actually get hit. Yeah, yeah, just well, yeah, yeah. That's well. The there, there's that, but I, I want to return to what you said because, man, that is the biggest point we have to make in this talk today. I mean, we've covered a lot of stuff, and we've given out. A lot, I mean, seriously, if, you, if somebody is astute and pays attention and goes back over this, a lot of free information, a lot of high level information on here. And uh, but what the main thing is that you said is people are not training this; they're staying away from this. They're staying away from stick training. They're not. You know, how many, like, okay, for example, you're going into, I mean, because it's, once again, I got to, look, I was a professional fighter. I did it for a really long time, 75 fights on three continents. And the thing is, sport fighters are not doing anything. You're not going into a boxing gym, dealing with someone trying to hit you with a stick 
as, as part of the training. You're not going to kickboxing. You're not going to Muay Thai. You're not going to MMA. You're not going to wrestling practice. You're not going to BJJ. None of this stuff is preparing you for facing. And this, we're just talking stick, you know, club, two by four, any of that baton, none of that. They're not, you're not training for any of that. So you think all of a sudden you have BJJ, which a lot of these guys want to think it's the ultimate. No, it is not. It's a, it's a, it's a recipe for death. Horizontal grappling in warfare or in real, that's not real fighting. That's, a, you know, the thing is, I just make a plug for myself. Combat Judah, for example, we're only about real fighting. We, it's like, well, is it like MMA? No, it's real fighting. And there's a huge difference. You'll have to come and check it out. But that's the thing. Like you said, people are not doing any of it, basically, because they don't have answers. They don't have answers, and they don't want to admit that they don't have answers. And then the other people who say, yeah, we have a section on it, you're traditional, and they're not dealing with the reality like you were, ta like you were talking about. Okay, let us, in there. Let, us, let us send a 13-year-old kid in there with a wiffle bat and just tell them, He's 20 bucks if he can plaster you with the <laughs> with the wiffle bat. And I guarantee that the 13-year-old kid's going to whack you all over the place. And your traditional stuff, even your even the Filipino guys that train in the Filipino stuff are not going to be able to stop it because they're, they're making assumptions. And, man, I mean, that's, really, here's, that's a huge thing. What I would say, my thing, like you said, people are not training at all. And then I would say people are making assumptions. That's the that's the problem. They're making and my you know the biggest flaw. I agree with you. I mean the main thing. I agree that that's the main thing. They're not training. But then the second <laughs> thing that they're not doing is they're, they're the that second fault is that they're making assumptions. They're making assumptions about how the fight will happen. That right. you'll be able to see it. That you're faster than the other guy. That it won't be that hard. That it'll be predictable. And that that is going to uh, if you don't die and you're able to recover from the IV in the hospital, come see us <laughs> after that. But uh, I, I mean, uh, I'm, don't you think those two are predicated? Uh, don't you think those two are kind of? Yeah, I, I'll give you a good example. I had a guy that told me what, how great he was at stick work. And I don't, you know, here again, it's just the way my mind works. I didn't have it set in my head what I was going to do. We were just fooling around and, and uh, you know, he, he was, you know, in the air and I used to do that stuff a long time ago and he's whipping that thing around I'm like yeah that's really cool he goes well how would you defend against that I don't know what made me do this and it really embarrassed the guy but I had the stick in my hand I just I threw the stick it was kind of you know up and down and it, it just yeah. smacked him right in the face and, and in the body it wasn't that hard I mean and, and as soon as it hit him I just started pounding on him <laughs> yeah and, and you can't and, and you could have taken him down too yeah, I just went in and started hitting him. Boom, boom, boom. I just started pounding yeah. on the guy. And, and, and I'm more like punching him. when you hit him and push him. So I wasn't really hurting him. And this whole yeah. thing fell apart. He dropped his stick, and I'm like, well. Because he made assumptions about how the fight's going to go. You know what yeah. I mean? And it just occurred to me to throw the stick at right in, right in, right in. And, and yeah. it all fell apart because he never had a stick thrown at him before. Yeah, I mean, there you go. The salt. Remember, you know, some people used to carry around pepper or salt to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, do that. That's, sand. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's getting into tactics and strategies. I, I always kind of liked it. When I was a kid, one of my things was to carry um, a bunch of pennies and shit in my pocket. I beat the shit yeah. out of a kid in a bowling alley who tried to jump me. I, you know, he's a bigger kid, and he, he grabbed me, and he threw me down, and I got up, and I put my hand in my pocket. As soon as he got up, I hit him right in the face with a whole bunch of coins. And those yep. hands went up, and I dropped down, and I hit him low, and then I picked up a torpedo trash can, and I beat that kid until he couldn't get up. <laughs> I was only eight years old. I you was know. thinking like that back then, just as a kid, because well, you it know, was kind of rough. And here, we, and here we are giving out even more free information and free yeah. tactics and Turn stuff. Your coins. Yeah. Turn your coins. I know. <laughs> Well, you know, okay, well, I'd say, you know, you can't get arrested for carrying around pepper, you know what I'm saying? Or a pocket full of pennies and shit. Well, marbles. Even, you know, marbles. Marbles, yeah, if you, get, if you can get marbles some places, they're, they're, they're pretty cheap, you know? I mean, uh, I don't know, you know, worldwide, I'm trying to think if I've seen them everywhere in the world. But if you can get all the marbles, because, I mean, you know, and, and the good thing about marbles is, that if they hit them in the face and they hit the ground and if it's on a, if it's on a flat surface then he's got a problem for walking, 
you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's can... why it's good. yeah marbles are good. Yeah, yeah, marbles. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the people are like, well, that's not, yeah, that is martial arts. That is combat. That is because it's strategy and tactics, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's not fair. Exactly. Who cares? It's not, it's, yeah. we're, you know? Like Andrew used to say that. He goes, boy, you do mean stuff. And I go, look, you know, I mean, when I wrestled, what, what did I weigh? I was 107 when I started wrestling, okay, in the sophomore year. And yeah. I never passed 117 when I graduated, so everybody was bigger than me. So I had to be a mean little fucker, and that's what yeah. I was. I was mean, and I thought I, I used to – I remember as a little kid, I'd set up pillows in my bedroom as if they were people, and I'd create scenarios, and I would just – respond. I mean, I, that, those wheels started for me way young. So that's yeah. why when the whole JKD thing kind of came up after I – done a little wrestling and some karate and stuff i'm like oh this is more like how i see things you know yeah, it fit stuff, you know yeah yeah it fit, it fit. yeah Any final well, stuff here yeah Anything final you got huh um well i mean man i mean uh this uh, this uh, this turned out to be one of our most jam-packed talks i think you know i mean there's yeah. a lot i mean this seriously there's a lot here on a topic that most people don't know a thing about number one number two it's bringing attention to the fact that people don't know about it you know it's like oh, uh, why is it you know how many people are talking about this not many not many and and uh, it doesn't mean that it's not dangerous because the majority doesn't talk about it just means they don't know about it doesn't mean it's not dangerous you can look up the fbi statistics for the united states and see about how many people get whacked and and with sticks and clubs and pool cues we didn't we didn't really cover pool cues but i've been hit by those from behind and stuff with the fat in the fat in i got hit right on the top part of my ear that was a that was a multiple multiple attacker deal uh because most of my Real fights have been. I can pay my way into a one-on-one, -on -one, you know. <laughs> so, but anyway, the um, what I got to say was, man, I, I'm really, I am impressed with this talk. <laughs> that's that's what I got to say. I'm I'm really impressed with this, you know. And uh, uh, any other, what do you have any closing uh, comments you want to make? Closing thought would just be that if they if they're smart, y'all guys listening to this to realize we actually just gave them a ton of stuff to train. They just have to get creative and go do it. All they need is those principles and start playing with it, and they'll start figuring out a lot of this stuff on their own if they just stay open about it and yeah. get away from, you know, prescriptive uh, pattern. Uh, yeah. Open so, pattern. Uh, yeah, it's it, you're right. You're right about that, and it's you know, death by stick if you don't listen to us. So anyway, so I just want to reiterate that um, to reach Ken O'Neill, he uh, put his phone number up earlier. You can. You can look back and see that, but you can also reach him on his Facebook, Ken O'Neill, and uh, in St. Louis. Look for the one that's in St. Louis on Facebook. And also that you can uh, get in contact with me uh, via fluentfighting.com or combat-judo.com, or I'm on, I have uh, Facebook pages and also groups. And the Facebook page, it's easiest would be uh, Cluxton Combat Systems. That one you can find, and it'll lead you to the other ones. But uh, once again, just want to say that Ken is available for workshops, clinics, uh, and contact him. Wealth of information, as you're hearing through our talks. And uh, we'll be back again. we got lots of things to talk about, lots more. If you're astute and, and, and pay attention, there's a lot of things you can learn from us. And so uh, anyway, I'll, uh, uh, I'm going to cut us off from the air, but uh, stick around for a second or two. Ken and uh, and uh, we'll talk. So everyone, we'll see you soon.